right, welcome back. Welcome back to uh, what are we? Uh, Greenbox Gaming plays Delta oh. Green Impossible Landscapes. It's happened again. Way to go. Yeah, it's I, but I, I picked it up better that time. Um, thank you for joining us. My name is Joe. Uh, I will be the handler for this operation. Uh, I am joined by a friend of mine who um, was supposed to be handling today, but has abdicated his responsibilities. Jean. Shame. Playing shame. Benedict. Hi. Shame. Shame. Hi. Shame. For shame. For shame. <laughs> and I am also joined by uh, by Dace playing Benji. Mm, what would you do with a zazzed up sailor? What would you do with a zazzed up sailor? sailor. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> okay, it's it's a certain it's an energy, and uh, of course we are joined by uh, Brad playing Hank. Hello. Well, it ties. You know, we were listening to sea shanties last night, and then we we're like, so what would a modern shanty be like? So that ties in. That is a good line, I think. A, a zazzed up or sailor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what is what is your, what, yeah what uh what is your favorite song that could be remade with modern day um uh, slang like skibbity and riz oh god <laughs> skibbity <laughs> i don't know the words that you are using what <laughs> i guess I jean jean is the oldest of us so old. so it's, <laughs> And not by much. Not by much. Not by much. <laughs> yeah. How are you guys I'm, doing? I'm gonna go ahead and veto that question, Joe. No, you just I didn't don't sign up. I didn't sign up to come to fucking improv theater class today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, you, you you didn't come to perform or to be judged, but but to judge. <laughs> oh. And to be performed for. Yeah. Well, how are you guys doing? How are you guys, how are you guys feeling? Things are. I know where I am. Things are like kind of starting to warm up. We're kind of making an early transition in spring. Do you guys uh, adhere to the the mythos of the groundhog and its predictive value of how the weather in spring is going to go? Do you guys like that? Song? I normally get all my weather from uh, from rodents. wildlife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you have. Oh, Weatherman is here, and then Farmer's Almanac is here, and then Brad. He just, like, <laughs> talks to animals. I just... What's I just, gonna be like? I just imagine he's, like... Squirrel. He's, like, crouched down, like, feeding, like, peanuts out of his hands <laughs> to, to squirrels in his backyard. Now the almond, it's gonna rain tomorrow. Pick okay. the cashew if it's going to... This is some this is some tea uh, leaves level stuff. The farmer's almond knack. Oh! Yeah. Uh, uh, you should be ashamed. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, wow. I'm going to shut it down. <laughs> yeah. All right. That was a good sesh. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. I was, I, was, uh, I was actually very surprised this week. I was talking to some people who I thought were uh, pretty well educated and, you know, researchers and scientists. And they really, really took the, my stance on the groundhog thing being a massive... Uh, just way to create income for a very certain town in Pennsylvania. Uh, like they took, they took from? it. Yeah, that's a cons. They 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 took it very seriously. Uh, they uh, an affront. It seemed Wait, like which which side were you on? Which side were they on? They were for the groundhog. They they really yeah. like the groundhog and they take it very seriously. Yeah. Not like okay, not super seriously, but like they they have a lot of uh. Like I guess, like uh, what's what's that term for, uh, you know, like when something's investment? In your past. Yeah, that's... respect, <laughs> respect, loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's that word for, and like when you when you when you and feel like really strongly astrology. about something in your past, like something that you experienced when you were a kid or something? Uh, Fondness. Jeez, oh, I don't remember. Yeah, they. Let's go. Yeah, you guys get it. But yeah, not. What if? What if? What do you think would happen if? So they have that little stupid stump, and they open the door, uh -huh. and the dude spends ten fucking minutes. You've seen the video. The groundhog. You, out. You've seen. You've seen this happen. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> Recently, and yeah. it pissed me off. And I kept watching it, even and and it made me angry that I was still watching it. But anyway, wait, what did he do? He didn't come out. Yeah, it takes the dude like ten minutes to coax this groundhog out, and then he holds him up in front of the crowd like he's fucking Simba. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
he I does. Thought, that question, and there's a huge would, crowd. I thought the that was the whole thing. Huge. If a, if he comes out, if he doesn't come out, then that means something. No, no, no. That is not how the ceremony goes. <laughs> oh, he's coming up, whether he wants to or not. Brings his <laughs> um, what do you think would happen if the dude picked him up and held him up like Simba, and then a guy in the crowd sniped him, his coat over? <laughs> Draws a pistol and just fucking unloads wow. on this groundhog. Wow! Like, I, what do you think the cultural ramifications of that would be? I mean, I mean, the face of gun control would be a lot different. Uh, that's for right. sure. <laughs> is that what is that what it would take for reform? It's, <laughs> it's murder just, of Tawny Phil. Do you remember like Do you remember the Harambe thing? Like it would be like that. Yes. Like it would be. Would it be dicks out for Phil? For dicks out for Boxatani Phil? What a weird time to be alive. Jesus, I can't believe we're having this conversation. Some theorize <laughs> that that was when our realities actually diverged. The death of Harambe. Mm. That's when the timeline sure. yeah, split off. Who That's are, neither here nor there. Who are these some? Uh, just... Uh, uh, basement dwelling neckbeards. That's a... <laughs> 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 Okay. That's uh, other meme lords such as myself. <laughs> such, the, the other, the council of lords of the meme. The lords of the meme. <laughs> the lord of the meme. What, what to do with the lord of the meme now? What, what to do with the lord of the meme now? I, I'm right now, I'm instituting a ban on she, she, she motherfucker, I can't even say it. Sea shanty. Don't you fucking talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> you close your mouth and you talk to me. <laughs> uh, Roger that. No more sea shanties. <laughs> oh, man. But I want you to know that I'm constantly going to be thinking about them. Okay. And there's nothing you can do about that. Brad, you you haven't you haven't weighed in much on the... I Obviously, that we know that you value the input of uh, woodland creatures uh, greatly for their predictive value. But what do you think about the fanfare around things like this weird little thing that I feel like if you explained it to a lot of people who weren't from the U.S. that they would be very puzzled. The groundhog? Around the groundhog and its ability to predict how the spring is going to go. Well, I, was, I wasn't I was weighing in because I was just thinking of like a Groundhog Day movie where like the dude holds up the groundhog and then that's when time gets reversed and it gets reversed with the groundhog and that's the premise of the movie. <laughs> okay. uh, because I feel like I'm walking into a trap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that's all. That's what I was thinking about. So you're just thinking of the movie Groundhog Day, but there's yeah. the, the the moment in which the time shifts <laughs> is just different. Instead of him going yeah, to sleep, when he, yeah, it's when he the dude holds up the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen Palm Springs? Uh, no. Yes. Yes. What is Palm Springs. That should go on the list. It is Excellent. so. It is. It. it is basically a. I'll put it on the list. It is incredible. <laughs> it's a. Who's the guy who plays Jay Coralda from uh, from Brooklyn Nine Nine? Um, he's you know he's been SNL and all sorts of stuff. Uh, is that Andy Andy, Andy Samberg? Andy, Andy Samberg. Samberg. Yeah. Um, so it's basically, it's basically a remake of Groundhog Day with a much different feel, and it is extremely uh. funny. It is mm -hmm. so good. Right, it's on the list. Yeah, it's a great one. But yeah, but Wait, to uh, clarify, what groundhog? In in my in my on my planet, hogs are little pigs. Correct. So is this a little pig? No. That comes out of the mm -hmm. ground. Nope. No, it's a rat. Are you familiar with the uh, woodchuck? Wood furry rat. So when you say chuck, that's to throw. Hmm. So it's <laughs> as a chomp. wood thrower. <laughs> Um, uh, I have, uh, okay, it, we probably like, it, this it probably nuclear. easier if we made a diagram. Probably we should. <laughs> I, to be to be absolute transparency, I haven't experienced spring in about four years due to travel. <laughs> so like, I might just be behind. Like you've just never like been piggies. in a locale while they're ha having spring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That's what happens when you're evading international courts. You know, like they just. <laughs> I'll catch up to you one day. Yeah. Uh, nervous laughter. <laughs> nervous laughter. <laughs> Laughs in documented immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you guys want to get into it? You guys want to 
guys want to do some Delta wanna... Green? I know we've talked... Keep talk... talking about marmots. <laughs> Is it a marmot, <laughs> technically? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Belongs to the group of large ground squirrels known as marmots. Oh, huh. Fascinating. So not pigs. Okay, all right. Speaking of uh, <laughs> of, of lore that people barely understand, uh, let's get back to Delta Green. Look, it wasn't my my best work. Talking all about right, marmot lore. <laughs> I'm talking about the Groundhog Day thing. You son of a bitch. Okay. You don't do what I do. <laughs> I don't do this from you. All right. Last time. Last uh, time on Delta Green on Impossible Landscapes. The crew. The crew, having returned from the night world to Boston, um, has found themselves uh, the focus of a bit of a manhunt. Uh, they have been labeled as armed and dangerous fugitives from uh, an insane asylum, mentally unwell and unstable, and have been vilified. Um, you guys, it's the second day since you guys got out, got back to Boston. Uh, you guys were contacted by a representative of Ed Wist, who you believe to be the kind of real-world mirror of Mr. Wild, uh, who assigned you a task and uh, offered support and offered uh, a rich payment of some type to actually have you guys go and, as it turns out, expose the entirety of Boston to the yellow sign. You guys have elected not to do that. You guys decided that, that was a bad idea. Uh, and... Eh, you know, I, who knows? Who knows how it will go either way. But um, you guys then decided, um, you know, after coming back from the night world, the crew has been much more embracing of the unnatural in general. Uh, and I think have just kind of, <laughs> we're not, I think you guys have realized that you're kind of like not getting away from it in a way. So you guys decided, hey, let's contact this demon. Let's contact these demons, this Malpheus and Malpheus demons um who you guys believed were related to this place that you woke up that had the sigil on the floor who were realtors i believe one of them was uh patricia mcswain was one of them i only remember it because it's such a specific name um the other one was uh marie j malthius you guys contacted them reached out and uh it seems that benji has this kind of penchant now for contacting these people um, you guys did so, and were met, and provided a house. A house that is not just seemingly a safe place, but also stocked to the teeth with weapons. Specifically, I believe you guys got a rather powerful military-style sniper rifle, a 50 caliber machine gun, which I will reiterate is not the kind of thing someone can just carry around and operate. And uh, an assault rifle. But you guys, uh, you, and you guys were pretty emboldened by that. Imcel was very, very, felt very, very comfortable after that. And they had asked this individual, this demon, well, what do we do next? And you were kind of instructed, you know, well, you're going to the, you guys had the idea, you're supposed to head towards the Broad Albin, but where is that? Where do we get there? And you guys were instructed to head back to a place where you guys were last season, last chapter, head back to the home of Elias Barbus, your former yeah. handler. Um, the, the handler that turns out to have not been a handler at all. That turns out to have been operating kind of at his own insanity or the machinations of the King in Yellow. Who can say? You guys arrive there, and for whatever reason, <laughs> I just can't imagine why you guys were so paranoid about going into this house. I just, I was like, man, they sure are being careful. What's up with that? It's like they've... <laughs> It's like they've been bitten here a time or two. Uh, you guys entered the home, found it to be mostly exactly how you left it, except for this strange kind of like monolith, like imagine the monolith kind of on its side, I think that's how I described it, um, that you guys eventually realized was a kind of weird clockwork style, um, what do you call it? Not, not like a music box. Like a moving music box. Yeah, like it like played out. Mm. I love that, Brad. What a great word. Let's use play. Like, uh, it turned out to be this oh, own no. little play that played out about that Benji <laughs> was, you know, Benji kind of was the one who kind of investigated it. And then it showed basically Benji's, like, a lot of Benji's life. 
from the moment that he met this strange individual down in Clarksdale, Mississippi, to uh, discover if he could sell his soul to the devil, to the present of you even being in this house, and then down the road of you guys being pursued by these figures, these figures in these these brown oil trench coats, gas masks, and weapons. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. Yep. Yeah, I did too. <clears throat> and then as one of you, I can't remember if it was Hank or Benedict, were observing outside, you guys saw out on the other side of the street, which is like, this is like the last house in the suburb, is like a wooded area. And, and in the twilight, in the barely barely remaining light on the horizon you saw the vaguest of silhouettes of a man a man standing in a trench coat shotgun in hand standing there as another figure approached them seemed to have a confab confab, and then disappear out into the fog and that is where we left the team so that being said Hank Benedict Benji what do you do? What if that's like alternate versions of us hunting ourselves? <laughs> no, you can't go there, Brad. You simply uh, you can't, can't go, go there. there. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> um, Hank says I, to everyone. I will, I will remind you. <laughs> I will. I will remind you just just for perspective's sake that it is about. We'll say. We'll say it's now eight o'clock. We'll say uh, it's eight okay. o'clock on September the seventh, seventeenth, which is a Thursday. <laughs> So Remind me, why were we pointed to um, his house again? I know we're trying to find the Broad album because that's kind of the first thing on the list that was handed to us at the beginning of Chapter 3. But mm -hmm. why were we directed towards this house again? It was kind of cryptic, wasn't it? Like, we don't have a clear goal. I think that, yeah. We just decided to come here? You were told, you were instructed to investigate this place by the demon when you asked. Oh, okay. By Malpheus and... or Malpheus, I don't remember which one. All right, so, and we have, and we've had this, like, weird locker on its side with a uh, yeah. plate. Um, okay, I'm going to do, first thing Hank's going to do, he's got a shiver down his spine as he thinks about the, asking everyone if they saw what he saw, but then he thinks better of it because he doesn't want to do a sanity check. And he... <laughs> will, um, Ow! You, you filthy fucking oh, metagamer. You fucking... You disgust uh, me. <laughs> but he's gonna do a uh, like an actual search, more of an in-depth search on the monolith. Okay. Take a closer look now that it's open after we've seen the. I guess just a straight up search. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let, let's see what you get. Success nine. Under sixty-four. Okay. Um. You you kind of looking at it, and again like, like you know these little puppets like just these little like paper cutouts of all the characters they slide up and down and you know from these little slots you, know, you can even look down in the slots and kind of see there's little moving bits um you know so you know from a distance this thing looks to be a completely seamless you know basically like chunk of like obsidian kind of thing like very glassy uh but you know as you guys are seeing this you really do realize okay this thing does have this is some type of machine some type of construction likely um you were able to find down on one of the corners kind of like an access panel. Um, you know, and there are tools all over this house. It does not take you long to find a screwdriver or maybe a pry bar or something like that to see if you can open this thing up. Um, it's not hard, but you definitely get the feeling like, okay, this seems like an access panel for the inner workings of this thing. Okay, uh... Hank tries to open it. Okay. Yeah, you uh, you do. Um, you see that as you open it, you look inside. Inside is like... Um, have you ever seen... I, like, I don't know what to compare it to, really. Like, a, like an industrial loom or something like that. Like something that is like incredibly intricate on the inside. And it has like a lot of like very much like moving parts. Um, you know, it's not like looking inside a computer. It's like looking inside of something like that. It simultaneously looks incredibly advanced, but also archaic. It's um, like mechanical. Like yes, there are intric mechanical intricately. So Hank says, "Steampunk, steampunk." Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very steampunk. Uh, 
I'm a fan of that aesthetic as well, Hank. <laughs> we'll take a look at this. You'll love it. <laughs> yeah. Benji's uh-huh. back. Oh yeah. shit! Oh shit! <laughs> oh yeah, you, oh, yeah. Benji still looks like Wendy Wright. Oh, oh. I totally forgot about that. It's been a while since we played. Yeah. Um, I think. But so my plan was to like actually roll a die on whether or not uh, Wendy changes back to Benji. But I was like, as long as we're on the run, it doesn't make sense for Benji to wear his normal face, right? Right? Sounds fine to me. I don't know if you're asking. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was kind of uh, asking. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know well, what to do. I think you got to remember, I thought part of the reason, yeah, that makes sense because there's a, a hit out on us. So, right. Yeah. Um, I don't know if being Wendy's that necessarily going to deter someone from attacking you if you're with us in the same breath but also I think you had to roll like a sandy thing whenever you took off and put on that cloak you took a bunch of sandy did, damage and y'all did and they did <laughs> yes. yeah. well, it's worth, just, uh, it's worth like, noting if you do this again you should probably do it in the bathroom or something Whatever you, <laughs> whenever you take off that thing Benji don't want us so we can look the other way yeah it's pretty grotesque who is Benji Oh god, it's happening. Again. I'm not getting into this right now. Yeah. Let's look at this thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, and so when, Go ahead. I'm when saying you, is there any you make sense Go ahead. of sorry. Wenji, can you make sense of this loom stuff? Look at this panel. What uh, yeah. what does this look like? Blockwork, man. Yeah. You and you, you do have do some we also skills know? that are very specific. You can actually take you can take a Clark car collision clockworks plus twenty on this. And did Hank let us know that there are people in the woods? I think we all saw it. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll say... So not to state the obvious, that seems like a bad sign, given what we just watched. Oh, but well, I'm taking this and then get out of here. 96 over 57 failure. Come on, so Benji. Nothing. So I okay. think... That's so disappointing. I think it's Benji, <laughs> is it Benji as you look into this... I mean, like, it's like, it's like a, like I said, like, like an industrial loom, <laughs> a vacuum cleaner, uh, you know, a diesel engine, like, had a baby. <laughs> like, it's just, it's, it's, so, there's so much going on. Um, but, well, what do you can see, you know, like, if you shine a, shine a flashlight in there, keep in mind, this house doesn't have electricity, you know, so you guys are kind of looking through, I'll assume you have flashlights. You, you know, you, like, poke a light in it, and you can see that there are, you would estimate probably hundreds of different little figures on sticks of these little paper cutouts and they are some of them you don't recognize some of them you do you mean that haven't popped up didn't necessarily pop up not as part of benji's story in fact there is one actually roll me a luck roll for benji um benji What was that? 84. 84. Fuck me. I'm rolling cold. Well, t- tick your clock. Car- your clock. Car- car- clock clockwork. Scale clockwork. If you failed it. Yeah. Um, Benji, you're looking in here and you're, you know, and a lot of these you don't know. Like very much. You. I mean, maybe you even do see Wendy Wright. Um, and maybe you even see one that just looks like your figure, but with Wendy Wright's face put on it, which is kind of unnerving. Uh, like scotch taped on. Yeah, it looks like someone. Loop. It looks like someone stuck it on with a piece of tape. Um, yeah. but you're also very interested to see, and you're surprised, honestly, to see someone who you probably have not seen a likeness of for quite some time, and it's very, very surprising. Um, and shit, you took their name off of your bond. Uh, if you ever lose a bond, don't take the name off. Uh, just put it, make it zero. What was the name of the... Was it Robert Johnson? Was the blues blues man who uh, Benji used yep. to have a bond with? Uh, T-Model Ford. T-Model Ford, that's what it was. You see T-Model Ford in there mm. as well. Well... And that one, that's something you haven't... Someone you haven't seen for quite Hank, some time. Hank uh, verbalized. He's like, hmm. He's, he, I guess Hank, everyone noticed these other little... Um, figurines he's he's like i wonder if we can make this thing uh show us some other scene other than what we saw there seems to be a lot of 
unused figurines in here. Um, I so don't know I, what exact. I I'll I'll Carcosian. I'll, I'll get Carcosian. Fuck. The Sorry. Delay. <laughs> the delay. Ah. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Dave. No, please, sir. I've lost the inspiration. <laughs> I will, I will say that as you guys are doing this, it's like in, you know, Hank, you, you would kind of reach down there and popped off the side of this thing. Benji's like maybe, it's about the height of a coffee table. You know, it's like, you kind of got to be on your hands and knees to kind of like bend down and kind of look in it. Um, we'll say at some point in time, as Benji's doing this, Hank, you do stand up. And as you stand up, you place your hand on the top of the table to push yourself up. And as you do, it begins to whir to life again. Um, okay. And this time, the play is a little different. It's a Did little. Hank dip. just fawns that. He just fucking slapped it. <laughs> he just, he just fawns it. Got to hit it just right. This piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> and it begins to show instead of the story of Benji, it actually shows a story of Hank. Hank from the time when he was in, I think it was 1975, uh, when he was transporting that prisoner from one side of the country to the other, and it starts there and shows the story of Hank. You guys are very surprised to see what looks like at least two, like that see that Hank originally is surrounded by these sons, like this family. And like there are some women who come up and then like, you know, like a few sons are added and then the women fall off and then the sons start to all fall off too. And then they are replaced by what looks to be like a, a group of, of Roughly dressed men. Uh, I, I I, would not stereotype them as being, you know, someone else might stereotype them as being homeless looking. Uh, but I would not do that. Uh, and you guys are surprised to see this. That seems a little odd. Uh, but again, you see... Hank's like, oh, my boys are all grown up. <laughs> <laughs> Time was not kind to Hank's boys. Um, and, and two of them are black. It's like, so that's weird. It's like, <laughs> they, they, like two, two of them change color. Uh, the, um, but yeah, you see the story of Hank again coming to this moment. This moment. And there is even a bit where you see, uh, you see the little Hank figure kind of acknowledging these gas mask figures. And then you see a very similar thing with again the um this you know tall towering figure masked figure in flowing gold robes leading the way as the as the world seems to build itself around it then it eventually leading to the doors of the broad album is there anything i can der derive from the location of the broad album that was kind of like what i was getting at like mm. It, like you know this is showing our past but maybe we can get this thing to show us our future or how to get to wherever you know because there seems uh, to be multiple stories stories within this monolith that it can what I was, replicate what i was trying to get at earlier is like i imagine the reason that benji failed on his car cushion clockwork is maybe like sometimes there are nuts that have like five sides as opposed to the standard six and maybe there's something really intricate and weird going on with this machine and maybe benji could look around the house and find the proper tool like the right wrench or spanner to fit the nuts to get this thing tuned up right hmm. so could i make a luck check you know what make a luck check if you pass a luck check i'll let you re-roll your carcosian okay. clockworks because You're you are so... in the you are in the house of the guy who was building he's this a tinkerer stuff. he's, a he's tinkerer. got the tools he's mm. got the tools i Come on, man. You've convinced me. This up. Yes! 44. Nice. You were able, after pulling out a few drawers, you find a bizarre and almost handmade looking set of tools that have wrenches or spanners, thinking where you're from. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, and all sorts of different things that like are not the typical, like, Oh, it's a it's a bolt. It's a it's a nut with six sides, or it's a Phillips head screwdriver. Like it's like it's not just that. It seems to be a bunch of different stuff. So if you want to give it another, there go. you are, my darling. While while this is going on, I just want to mention that Benedict is kind of whistling to himself in the background, like, and resetting the claymore towards the forested area. <laughs> just so <laughs> you guys are messing around with this ball. <laughs> 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 Not a sea shanty, 
but close. <laughs> I imagine that. <laughs> living in the sunshine, having in the sunshine, having oh, a wonderful no. time. Oh, hell no. <laughs> so you're just, it's like, as you're setting it up. But a hell no. deep pool. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to set the claymore and start making some preparations or some Didn't kind of escape. Didn't you say that Benedict brought with him? <laughs> and I told you, the M24 sniper rifle does, is not a good close comp, close quarters thing. Didn't you say that you were bringing it with you anyway? I've got it, yep. So, yep. this might be a perfect a time to maybe even go upstairs yep. and, like, look through an upstairs window. You know, like, have you ever seen that thing where snipers will set up a table, like, three feet inside yeah. a window and lay on the table? And then so mm. they can, like, see out, like, like this would be a perfect example. I don't know if you're that kind of guy. You have, a, like, a military history background, so maybe that kind of stuff. Maybe. Not maybe. That's all it is. It's on a book. <laughs> You've seen claymore. Movies. Definitely claymore Definitely to start, claymore. and then he's gonna let the others know. Um, I think those those men outside are probably a little bit of a problem, and we need to. <laughs> we should recognize that. Get this show on the road. Yes. I'll, um, I'll be up uh, there. You start. You start to poke at Hank's paranoia now. He's like, uh, I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, <laughs> do whatever you're gonna do, Benji. Quick. Yeah, and when and, she's like just involved in her tinkering she's just like engrossed in it like it's like like you're like you're laying on your back like you're from your like shoulders up are like now inside the machine basically yeah totally and you're like reaching down and like fumbling to try to find the wrench that you want that's like down by your side like holding the flashlight in your teeth what kind of oil do you think carcosian clockwork uses what does it smell like that's not fish know. Fish. It's fish oil. <laughs> fish oil. Totally. Fish oil. It would definitely be fish oil. That's so okay. gnarly. Give me uh, give me another roll. You can take the 20% again on it. You have, okay. You, know, you don't seem to be pressed for time. You would have tools. I might be being too... Oh, 41. Yes. 41. Bungie. You begin to look into this thing. You're taking bits apart. Um, and you that Wenji is able to look around and basically find there seems to be similar to like a like a big like like you know that somewhere in here has to be a power source that something is running everything like something is producing the momentum or the power or whatever either it's an electric engine or something like that now you have a Carcosian clockworks knowledge you know that some shit just doesn't make sense but you find an area where there's like a small box within the box where you think that where they're basically like there's like a shaft coming out of it and that shaft seems to run everything that all of the movement inside things coming from this one place um do you want to look inside this box in a box you are talking about boxes and shafts you know me um <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah look inside okay da -da 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 -da. Hmm. Go ahead. Mm hmm. I know what's coming. And roll me a sanity check. Yeah, yeah, figured. <laughs> let's see what you get. Um, let's see. Okay. Failure. <laughs> Fucking failure. Okay. Do you want to roll the d4 or do you want me to do it? I'll do it. D4. Fuck me, that's a four on the D4. <laughs> oh, wow. Was it worth it? So, so do you want to deflect? <laughs> Now's not the time to go insane. Well, I don't know. No. Maybe it is. It's, just it's never the time. It's never the yeah, time to go insane, really. It's, there's I never will... a good time. There's worse times. Yeah. But there's never Here's a good the thing. time. I gotta do this strategically because I've fallen in this trap before. If I deflect, I'm gonna lose willpower points, and I have less willpower than I do sanity. So I really honestly, just take this it on might the chin. be a better. Yeah, this might Maybe. be better than if we're in like a combat situation for sure, or we're in a more unknown setting. Yeah. Well, so because might... I recently passed my breaking point, like I have some leeway, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go oh, okay. catatonic or anything. So yeah, I'll just take all four points. Benji pulls you know you with these very specific tools you know these like special screwdrivers and stuff you pull off the case of this small box of where the engine that runs this thing should be as you 
open it, there is a moment where you you first don't know what you're looking at exactly. It becomes very clear very quickly that it is a bottle that is sitting here. The oh, shaft shit. basically oh. goes in here and goes to nothing. But the bottle is just sitting in the compartment. This thing should wow. not work. Should not work. There's nothing moving it. The bottle is, is sitting there a on its sea side. sea shanty in the bottle? How fucking dare you? I already. <laughs> Hank, uh, take uh, three D10 damage. That's. that's uh, but you see this bottle um, laying in here, kind of catty corner. And that is. And I imagine that before. Um, <laughs> You're going to have a mental break because this is an unnatural sanity damage from an unnatural source. And you're going okay, to go okay. into a catatonic fugue unless you want to repress Great. that. Fantastic. What happens when you're actively repressing and then you repress again? <laughs> well, you already repressed earlier and then had that ta catatonic thing. Okay. Probably, uh, Benji's having a very sleepy day. Like, it's just... <laughs> he's having yeah, a, he had the break in the car, didn't he? Yes. That's right, that's right. Silently, yeah. So, you're okay. if you're going to experience... So, I imagine that Benji has just enough time to maybe reach and pull this thing out and get back under it. And he's sitting there with his... Or, you know, or Wenji is sitting there with his back to the, the monolith and holding this bottle. It looks a lot like an old-school beer bottle. Um, and it has the cap is still on it. No and cap. Wingy, no cap. Oh, yes cap. Yes cap. Um, God, no. Uh, and Wingy, you're sitting there staring at it, and you just begin to zone out. It becomes very evident very quickly that you guys have lost Wingy again. Oh, God. Um, very important question. Whose bottle does it look like? Yeah. Can I, can I do like an occult or something? No, that's not. It's unnatural, isn't it? You could do an unnatural if you if you'd like. I've got none. Okay. Um, well, Hank kind of makes it known. He doesn't like really touch. He, I think Hank would probably know that there's what's kind of going on. Like he's having a little bit of a, some issues going on, so he'll like kind of leave him be and let uh, Benedict know what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see the name. There's a name on the side of the bottle. Would you like to hear it? I'd love to hear yes. it. You see the name. Victor Corell. That's two R's and two L's. Victor Corell. Yes. Do we know that name? Do y'all recognize that? This I is the... I don't recognize it. I think this is the first time we heard it. Maybe. I'm reading. I can't see board. anything on the murder board. Yeah. Uh, is Corel a demon? Doesn't oh. sound like one. Always but... a good question. Well, I mean, is Steve well, Corel is... a demon? Uh, <laughs> yes. I've heard he's actually a nightmare in real life. <laughs> really? Not very <laughs> friendly. Comedy. Uh, can I do a psychotherapy? Would that be appropriate to try and Ooh. look after Wenji? Yeah, you can try to, to just coax him out. I imagine. Have you ever seen the movie Airplane? Where the where the woman's having like the anxiety attack and people just mm. line up in a line to shake her slap and slap her. her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, because Benji is my bond, can I can I argue for a plus twenty or a forty even? Mm. Does really really caring about it make you better at it? Yes, As... it does. For psychotherapy, absolutely. The empathy, man. The empathy. Are you, you tell me? I I would say that there's a certain amount of disconnect that needs to be there to oh. be effective. Oh no! I would argue, <laughs> no. sir. Uh, no. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it at a flat tw twelve. Take a flat a twelve. Let's see, let's see what you see. If you can rouse Benji. Oh my I get god! Get a critical one. <laughs> Holy nice. Shit. Wow. Benedict, you take that. You take it out like a joke. <laughs> uh, here's the part where we mansplain therapy to the professional therapist. <laughs> you actually really have to deeply empathize with the you patient. See, you really do, see, Joe. your problem is that you don't get your patience. That's your problem. It's like you don't care. It's almost as if 
you don't care. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, you, uh, oh. you're you able to get through to Benji, and Benji, sh- I mean, like, you maybe even before, maybe Benedict, I mean, this is critical. So Benji, you know, like, he, like, Benedict sees you doing this. He sees you going into, he sees you starting to zone out. And he's there. The, and he's there. And maybe he, like, pushes the bottle down, you know, out of your eyesight and puts him, aligns himself in your eyesight and is, like, talking to you. Um, Ed. I'm going to do something I don't normally do. You're okay. Because, like, I want to respect that critical. Put your pants back on. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> well, that was for the VOD audience. That's, uh, uh, so, why don't you take one sanity point back? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Nice job. Yeah. Do well me. Done. Done. <laughs> Do me, me next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah. Um, uh, he looks at Hank. He looks at Hank. He says, Hank. And he takes his head in his hand. He says, Get the guns. But there's no sanity recovery there. It's yeah. just. <laughs> it's just, it's um, just practical advice. Yeah. <laughs> so, before we go yeah. on. Before we go on, there is something that I want to acknowledge. There's something I want to acknowledge when it comes to regaining sanity. I actually owe you guys some sanity. Oh. What have you done? I didn't read the things as well as I should have. Um, And I hate to do this right in the middle of this, but I just remembered it. You guys should have all received 2d6 sanity when returning to Boston. Oh. Because of the duration of time passing? The idea of, like, overcoming and having been reasserted into the world was supposed to give you back sanity. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's going to be very helpful. So, real quick, if if each of you want to independently roll your 2d6 and take that back. 11. Holy shit! Hank Ellis, 11! And 10 for Benedict. And Benedict, 10! And five. And for five Benji. for Benji. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is insane. Nice, that's great. Okay, so keep in mind. So, pun the, intended. It's yeah. Uh, it's, it's right. insane. <laughs> if you want to, and so if you go Ooh. back above a a breaking threshold, so the breaking head threshold stays where it is. You don't readdress it. Um. So if there's any insanity or psychological problems that you inherited when you broke something, just right out behind it, uh, repressed. Because basically, if you've gone back over that limit, that psychological break, like your paranoia, for instance, is technically currently repressed. Yeah, it is now? Yes. Okay. It's currently repressed. Well, cool. We nice. don't record the old breaking threshold, though, do we? No, no. Leave your breaking point where that... it is. Yeah. I'll I take mean, that. I... Don't, uh, don't think about it. It's repressed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, so we just add that amount back to our sanity. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so that's my bad that I, I didn't do that. But um, so wow. yeah, that's, so that's ex- extremely helpful. Oh, that's it is true. extremely helpful. Thanks that's that's my bad, guys. I apologize. Um, so yeah, so here you guys are. You're ha- holding this bottle with this name, Victor Corell, on it. Benedict, does the name Victor Corell mean anything to you? Also, oh, holy no. shit, good pep talk. I feel fucking amazing. <laughs> I feel great. <laughs> I knew you'd come back. Uh, no, it doesn't. And then he kind of like slowly turns away, gets his phone out, and tries to <laughs> okay. covertly okay. Uh, answer the question. All right. Uh, let me think about it for a second. Oh, uh, hold on. I've got to go use the bathroom. Uh, uh, it's, uh... Yeah. <laughs> you just you just go and sit on the sit on the toilet with the seat with the seat on like the cover on and just uh do a quick google. google. Um, I, is that like a history? No, that's not a history, is it? Roll me either a history or a bureaucracy or if you have anything that's to use that's like um technology, you can uh, use that too. That's a failure. Okay. That's a sixty one over fifty. Okay, it doesn't mean you're not gonna get anything. That's not what that means. Yep. Um, that being said, uh, brings to, up Steve Carell. No, that's not. Oh, uh, the wrong one. Yeah, you have to dig a little bit. I think he's a comedian. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's a comedian. Guys. Benedict watches the forty-year-old version. <laughs> <laughs> that's him. You guys are wondering why he's taking so long to poop. Um, 
Anyway, you you do find mention of a name. Uh, you see that there is a man named uh, Stephen Carell, or, or sorry, Victor Carell, um, who has a little bit of a um, who appears to have been back in the two thousands. Um, looks to have been like some type of film student or something. Um, I believe in, in New York, no, Chicago, in Chicago, uh, some type of film student in Chicago, and you see some vague, um, references to, like, some, like, thesis level, or, you know, like, uh, some projects that he was informed on, or that he was a part of, and the last thing you really ever see mentioned about him, the last thing you find is an obituary. Mm. You find an obituary for, let's see, you find an obituary for the 21st of May, 2007, where apparently in a mugging gone wrong, Victor Carell was killed. Mm. So I don't think we recognize him. Uh... But here's some information. What film? Can I look up what film he was involved in? Oh, Lord. I'm going to tell you right now. No matter how hard you search, you can find nothing. About you, his work? You find that some other, some other stuff, some film projects, maybe some names, some stuff, you know, he was on, like in the, you know, with some other uh, college students. You know, you can find his name and maybe in the credits some other people's stuff. You cannot find anything that he specifically did, even though you can see that there's some information that he did apparently do some project. You can't find it. Mm. Where to go to film school? In, in Chicago, I'm assuming. In Chicago. That's, yeah, mm. in Chicago. I wonder if I could uh, find some more info on the mugging or the crime surrounding his death. Uh, is, is that a skill set you think Hank has? As a law well, enforcement person? I know we're on the run, so I don't know if he could necessarily... I don't know how that's going to work. Like, I don't guess he could, like, necessarily tap into the... Yeah. Into his old... Law office logs or something. It, um, but I, I would say you could attempt to do so without being sussed. Um, it could be a risk. You could also do things to affect the level of that risk. You know, you could go to a coffee shop and access it from there from a public place you know if you use your phone you're definitely gonna be have some issues maybe we'll try that uh, maybe that could be our next objective before we to find more about this Victor yes in the meantime I'll hold on to the bottle okay. that is precious should <laughs> it should be stares at it admiringly should we get out of here? Should we consider? Uh, uh, out yes, of here? we should get. Uh, we should definitely get out of here before we leave. Hank was going to take another glance at the uh, wood line, forest line, to see if there's anything else he sees before leaving the house. If you want to roll that roll, yeah. Uh, alert. Yeah, alertness. Failure. You can't you don't see anything it seems the figures have dispersed I don't like that well uh, we can't stay here that's for sure so uh, uh, I say we get in the car and try to find another uh, place to lie low or, or possibly go straight to a coffee shop tonight and see if I can find something on this individual in the uh, crime files I like on the contrary that. Hank I was actually hoping that we could stay here so that we might set a new record an entire session in one room <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> hell so no I like, I like hell this idea no. <laughs> I, I like this idea of hell getting no. out of here but <laughs> Hank I think we are being monitored and 
I don't know if we want to leave a trail of breadcrumbs for the program. Is there any benefit? Oh, you think to actually to leave it to leaving to actually do the search and leave your phone here so that Delta Green comes and checks in, maybe clean stuff up. Also, Wait, you want to do that? Oh, that are you suggesting saying? setting up an ambush for Delta Green? I want us to not be taking all the heat from this fucked up world that we're in right now. And if there are these people with masks coming through and there's this monolith, I know Delta Green has burned us, but we might be able to use them to save our own asses. And observe what happens from afar? Is that what you're saying? No. No, just leave them breadcrumbs. I'm sure if we use our credit card anyway, they're going to be on us. I'm sure if somehow we use the wrong website or access some of our old history. Or even, or even regular law enforcement, them. not just Delta Green. We could even phone the cops if we're being direct, but I was thinking we'd get something out of it. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I mean, I don't necessarily want this scene to fall into the wrong hands or a, a random pedestrian, that's for sure. So mm -hmm. I'd be willing to do that. Wingy. Well, it's a risk. It's a risk. Um, any anybody that we expose to this is it, we run the risk of that exposure. That's exactly the problem. Here he is. Hank's been looking it up on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. <laughs> he just completely disregarded what Wingy <laughs> says. <laughs> Uh, but in all seriousness, if everybody's down, that sounds okay, I suppose. I have... We don't know how many steps ahead we are, but... No fucking clue of the consequences of this decision, but yeah, why not? <laughs> I guess he's just gonna have to leave his phone here after he uses it. Yeah. Alright, Hank, Hank tries to access his... Um, you know, law enforcement files via his phone. And you're specifically looking this up? The crime. And any more information we can find on Victor. Well, you you have his... You know where he died. You know he died in Chicago. You have his date. Um, you are surprised to see, Hank, that you are still able to access uh, remotely, you know, through whatever means. I don't know if this is actually something that can be done, but we're going to say it is. You're able to actually still access remotely your uh, access to to crime, you know, records and stuff like that, you know, through crime web stuff, you know. 202 crime web dot gov. Uh, you know, you go straight to it. Bam, you're there. Um, you see and you find much more information. Uh, you see specifically that there were um, that in the reports and you can like download this, whatever you need. There are a few things that stand out. One, there was suspected foul play. Um, there was, they were never able to prove anything and actually give me either like a law or a criminology check or something like that, or even a bureaucracy. Yeah. Uh, let me, ch we're going to do a criminology. Mm -hmm. Benedict is peering over his shoulder. Can he help? Success. 56 oh, under 60. You get the feeling that from reading kind of between the lines as a law enforcement professional that the investigators the detectives on this case were probably their hands were forced to stop looking into this um that there mm. were there are questions left unanswered and even the manner in which the reports are written is they're kind of passive aggressively stating that there's something here that's not being looked at um, you it kind of cover gather up. that that there appears to be that you would guess that there was they were investigating foul play and it seems they were hitting several roadblocks and they were encouraged to announce this what it was um, that even the evidence that was present isn't like yeah his wallet was gone and stuff like that but what was he doing on the side of town nobody knows um, like the way in which he was found was really odd for just a mugging um, you know there was some attempt to Anyway, it just doesn't make sense. And that is Hank's feeling, that this is something else. You do also find something else interesting. One of the the other thing of note, um, well, there are two other things of note. So there are three things. One, you think there's foul play. Two, 
there is mention in the files about uh, Victor Carell's girlfriend having committed suicide um, and was actually discovered in her kind of uh, like in her like family's like you know like vacation home uh, after Drunk. this happened. No, she had hung herself. Oh, wow. And her name? Or is that important? Her name was Luisa Reggie. Reggie so, yes, Ladue. So, yes. So she was, um, she was, there's a, some type of lake, like near Chicago, or I guess it's up there near the Great Lakes. But there's like her, her parents, she was also a college student. Her parents had like a, um, like a vacation home, like on the lake, like a small, uh, kind of bungalow kind of thing and she was found there and they think that she'd been dead for over a month um, when they found her that she had kind of been missing and no one had been able to lay hands on her until they really started to investigate and try to look find her um, her boyfriend so how is this relevant whatsoever to anything Are... it's, it's well it's a completely new lead a, a new yeah. person the, um, the last but... thing you realize that is of interest is there again are mentions of that this person this victor carell had just previously that he had shown some type of that he was some type of artist or film or like independent filmmaker and that he had re just a few days before this happened before he died that he had some type of premiere or some type of showing of a film that he had produced no no mention of the name no mention of anything but you do find a date for it five or okay for the film the 5th of may 2007 hmm does that date hold any significance for you fellas well was Go. um Two weeks before he died. Yeah. You said he died before his premiere was due. Just want to no, check no. those dates. No, no. Sorry. Did I say that? He died 21st May. Yeah. And his premiere was on the 5th. So he died after his premiere. Yes. Got it. It's unclear if it was like a big premiere or if it was just like a showing. Because again, he's like a, like a film student. So... But yeah, but any mention of it otherwise seems to be absent in some form or fashion. Okay. He's dead. He's already dead. This happened almost a decade ago. His girlfriend committed suicide after his mugging. The mugging was covered up or encouraged to stop. Obviously, I mean, or somewhat obvious the film probably had something to do with king and yellow uh probably exposed hank's like i mean the cover up could have been delta green off of him or it could be someone else uh unrelated to that but he probably permitted something to do with the king and yellow and then maybe got disposed of by delta green after that or something mm -hmm. As Hank and Benedict are talking about this, Wenji gets like a sort of hypnotized look in her eyes. She's staring at the bottle. By the way, what is... It's just a bottle. Is there anything in the bottle? Not as far as you can tell. You can like... She pops the cap it. off. What? Okay. It's a twist. It's a twist top. You do so. You twist it. It kind of it, it kinda gives a... Huh? Smells it doesn't smell like anything puts it up to her lips there's nothing in the bottle turns it up nothing in the bottle rats I thought I cracked the code <laughs> <laughs> have you have you considered swallowing it that's uh <laughs> the entire bottle <laughs> I was hoping, like, if uh, I mean, if bottles are like the essence of people. Like, I was hoping to gain some insight without fucking. I was hoping to cut out the middleman rather than like 
going to his home and talking to his mother and trying to track down this video that he made 10 years ago. Like, there are no shortcuts in Delta Green. No, no, no truly not. Truly <laughs> not. Let's, on that, let's, I don't think there's any. Let's leave this area, maybe, and lie low and yeah. think about what we've just discovered. Also, before Hank's going to leave his phone there since he looked at, you know, all that jazz, is there anything. Uh, Delta Green protocol that he could leave on that mm. phone in the notes section or something like that where it basically means like we're still friendly to the organization. Well, Benedict was gonna... Benedict was thinking that. He was gonna ask, can I have your phone to leave whoever's coming next? A uh, bit of a note, Hank. Hmm. Yeah. And um, I would say there's right. probably no specific... Funnily enough, an organization like Delta Green does not have a special code for you to let them know you're still cool. Like, no, guys, like, I promise. Like, <laughs> that's not really how it works. Um, you can leave a note. And if you're reading this Delta Green, we're still well, good what, guys. You just what the, I was going to write. The Google search, what you I just put it right in, the, right in the search bar. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to leave that search open, maybe do some other searches that might raise some flags. Uh, God, I don't know. Some searches for Ed Wist, some searches for Marcus or Darabondi and like Dr. Dallin. Maybe three tabs open. Let's take a picture of the murder note. board and leave that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just give it to <laughs> them all. This is what we got. <laughs> and then just in the notes section <laughs> to write something like either back us up or back the fuck off. And to leave that step in the little machine. But, oh, okay. Uh, continue. Yeah, I mean, you can you can definitely leave something like that if you if you want and to to see if they actually get it. I don't know. It's a total total luck thing. Yeah. Or unluck. Who knows? Or unluck. Might be a terrible idea. But yeah, you can you can definitely leave that for them if you want to basically basically let them know like, hey, like we're still cool. You guys need to be cool too. Um, we can. I cannot tell you what that's gonna do. Uh, you know, we'll find out as it goes. This is the optimism of Benedict coming out. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's, you know, even like what uh, what Hank said, like the idea of like, you know, we don't want this place, someone just walk up in here. But also what Wenji said, you know, like, well, if everyone we bring in, we're exposing to this. Everyone. And that is a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's it's the reason you guys didn't want to do the job putting the yellow sign up of the, in the middle of Boston because it's like this is still this gets on people like you don't have to get that close to it. You know, think about 1995, the McAllister building. You know, it entered that building via a book. And it got on mm. everyone in that building and then it got on the building. Yeah, much less an intricate Carcosian clockwork construct. <laughs> you know, like Barb's house, with the exception of the Dorchester, is probably the next thing you have to a ground zero for, you know, the effects of Carcosa. You know, yeah, totally. in entrance into the night world, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's, I can't help, I've just got this nagging feeling that we haven't found what we're supposed to find in this house. Like, I mean, the, um, what's her name that we tracked down to LA? We saw her in this house. Like, oh, Sam Ahina is, to, to Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Sam Ahina, there is a portal to the night world, to the night floors in this house. Like there's yeah. some way to activate it. And I just feel like that's the right course of action. Can I activate Wenji? Be like, hey, hey boy. Do you, do you smell it? What's that? When she's got the bottle to her lips and she like looks over like, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> go get it. Go get the door for the night worlds. You go get it. Well, I mean, you you guys have witnessed some things. Like you know that the door upstairs went into what you thought was the bookshop. Oh, uh, you guys know that. Uh the red door. Yes. It's also worth noting mm. that this house does have a mirror or two. Mm. Oh, and actually, this is a really good opportunity to, to realize something. When you guys went into the Samahina home, you had seen a... And you experienced the weirdness with the mirrors for the first time. You guys had witnessed there was one of these bathrooms that seemed to have this big pile of books 
outside of the, uh, like right there at the bathroom sink. You guys saw that before you ever experienced the weirdness with the mirrors. You guys saw that here too, that the downstairs bathroom is just piled with books, like up against the mirror in some cases. So, and keep in mind, Benedict had a bit of an odd interaction with the mirror in the hotel you guys were in. Mm -hmm. So, Hank, it seems like you zoned out a second there, but uh, we're planning on how to get out of here, and we're not thinking oh, uh, the front door. Okay. Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're, we're going out the front door. We're trying to see if there's another way out of here that isn't through the door. Uh, do we or let's go and is it through reality. the door yeah what do you mean we're not going out the front door Hank. we're thinking more of exiting through a mirror or through the bookshop uh, so to speak we let's can go get check back out to... this book okay you think we can get to the bookshop again from here possibly when you guys had looked through the red door before, you'd seen there was basically like this little tiny slot. And you had, and the reason you guys had not investigated it further is because it was basically built into like a cinder block wall in this closet. Um, and I think originally it was like, okay, let's go get some equipment, like some jackhammers or bulldozer, <laughs> and come oh, so back. It was actually, and it wasn't like a door, it was just like a slot. It was like a door that opened oh. into like a, basically a small closet sized area that should not have been okay. there. Like, you know, okay. just by the the geometry of the house kind of thing. You know. Well, how are we going to fit through the skulls? Case. That was it's the plan good. while I fell asleep. No, we're not. We're going to go <laughs> no. through this tiny slot. <laughs> we're not <laughs> squeezing in the slot. Let's just go check out those books and maybe see if there's anything in the bath. Um, mirror wise. Okay. If you guys go into the bathroom, again, you see these big stacks of books. And you see some books that you've seen in the night world. You know, uh, you see very obviously uh, copies of The King in Yellow. Um, you know, if anyone wants to make me, you know, some type of search roll or something like that and see if you can find out anything a little more interesting. Okay. Look around stuff. Just a straight up search. Yeah. Wow. He got a success it's, right on 58. 58. Oh, nice. 58. That's, that's like, a, yeah, that's very it's high. the best success you could do, really, uh, outside of critical. But, um, yeah, uh, you start digging through, and what you, you know is that you have seen these same copies um, of these books, definitely in the Samahina home. Um, and it does not take much of a leap, even for you to see. There appears to be, uh, like, kind of toward the top of the pile, you discover what looks like a notebook. Like, most of these are books. You discover a notebook that has, that looks to, like, kind of, you know how, like, you might write notes in class when you're in school? You know, and if you look at that note, you could tell that two people are just writing back and forth to her, to each other. You find this small notebook, like a, like a little, this little spiral notebook that you could, like, stick in a pocket, you know, and that, uh, you know, like, spiral around the top. That looks like notes were going back and forth. Um, it's, you don't, I mean, you don't know the handwriting or anything necessarily. Actually, no. Oh. No. I will say you know the handwriting. We do because have you the guys, handwriting. you guys got way off in the weeds Definitely. on the handwriting of the invitations and stuff you guys originally received. You know that one of these pieces of handwriting is Barbus, was okay. Dr. Mm -hmm. Elias Barbus. Okay. And it looks like. He'd been communicating with someone back and forth. Um, it becomes very apparent very quickly that most of it is insane ramblings. You do, do see some mentions about which household chemicals might melt flesh. Um, uh, okay. You do see some back and forth of that. And you also see some questions about... You guys had found this taped together a homemade version of the king in yellow the phantom saith uh in the samahina home you had uh come to the conclusion that the young samahina son had become quite corrupted and had received 
the King in Yellow story from the lips of his dead father. Oh. And... That he killed and put in a bathtub. Yes, that he killed, put in the bathtub, and drank the sludge. melted. Yes. We still Um, don't know where he is, right? The son? Sam, yeah. No, you found the, the father's body in behind the mirrors um but the son no so you see that um benedict it's not much of a leap for benedict to reach up and touch the mirror and again to just to barely feel his fingertips just slip below where the surface should be So we're back at this. Y'all want to go through the mirror? Is that what yes. you're trying to? Yes, we, very we, much. We've so, already right. been there. <laughs> I think the only way out is through Hank. Oh, that is the saying. That's what they keep saying. I kind of wanted to go to Chicago and talk to his entire family, and then go up to the Great Lakes and investigate the area where his girlfriend committed suicide. And all that stuff, though. When she fucking dives through the mirror, <laughs> <laughs> Olympic style. <laughs> if you if you reach forward and attempt to touch the mirror, kind of on your own, it appears to just be a mirror. There's nothing unnatural about it. Uh, Wait, this oh, is okay. me. But Benedict, on the other hand, or even if you kind of touch it at the direction of Benedict, it seems to yield. Is so something happened. I'll say something happened to me in the night world. When we got back to this world, I seem to have some sort of connection with these demons. Is there anything different about you, Benedict? Have you noticed any changes? Well, this uh, this mirror thing that's happening seems clear as day. I wonder what Hank can do. But <laughs> aside from probably his... not shit, the fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> Hank's not fat. He's old. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, guys. <laughs> so, so I... when you put your hand on this mirror, it feels like you could go through. I think we can go through it. I well, don't know where it'll just, go. I don't just know if it's safe. what y'all did before. If y'all really want to go through it, trace the yellow sign on the mirror and then go through it. I think we should hold hands while we do this. <laughs> I'll watch. Oh, sure. <laughs> well, I'll stand so, back here. Hang all or nothing <laughs> and get the guns at the ready. I just want to reiterate. The main objective here for all of us, right, is to find the hotel brought out. Which yes. seems to exist in the night world. Yes. Now, uh, once we go through this mirror, we're gonna have to be swimming and all that kind of shit. Maybe. But we don't know that. Perhaps. We need to find the hotel. We have found possibly the author's bottle based on the Victor? letter from Abby. What? I don't know. Why would that be the author's bottle? The author I don't of what? know. Uh, it's a hunch. I don't know. Um, I think he was just another bystander, maybe more important than some of the other people. We, but he he was corrupted. I don't think he wrote the King Yellow. He was corrupted by it, maybe. Um, Hank, it's simple. Are we going through the mirror? Sure, but I don't like it. That's all I'm going to say. Me neither. Oh, all right. My brain hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Why does your brain I hurt? don't know what the I right I wanted to go through the mirror. Anymore. Hank's agreeing. He says, I don't like this. Someone roll me a luck roll. Joe's just rolling dice in the background. Just like rolling <laughs> dice. Seeing how many people are about to ambush us. I swear to God. Joe, question. Yeah. What is a 100? Of luck? Come up as, that's, yeah. That's as bad as, as bad as it gets. But it came up as green. I cool. That's <laughs> <laughs> um 
So yeah. So um, you rolled a 100? John? Yes. <laughs> I rolled a 100 on luck. <laughs> you guys are having this conversation. You guys are trying to figure out what is what. And they're like, you guys are at di are disagreeing and like trying to figure out when you see the flash of a flashlight from the outside, because there's like a little bathroom window, you see a flashlight, like because someone is like, looks like someone is shining a light on the house. Um, Hank, with your excellent alertness roll, you don't need to roll, but with your excellent alertness skill, you hear the unmistakable sound of a police radio. What? Did y'all hear that? Um, fuck. And that is probably a good place for us to call it for this episode. Nice. My friends. Uh, okay. You spent the episode in the same house, but you did move to the bathroom. Different room. So, <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> well, went into the little box, even. You were, like, shoulders deep yeah, into yeah, the yeah. weird <laughs> Well, we'll promise our listeners we'll do better next time and <laughs> stay in the same room we won't <laughs> relocate whatsoever right Truly all right compelling radio we all must stand <laughs> in <Yeah. this> bathroom. <laughs> the only way out is through the mirror it's the only way away from this cop i can yep think of i think so <laughs> but guys thank you thank you very much uh everyone everyone listening everyone watching thank you for joining us uh as always uh hit us up uh come kind of follow us on our twitter our Reddit, all those links are in the uh, description of where you're watching this. If you really like what you're listening to, you want to get it two weeks early, uh, or a week, is it week? No, it's just a week early. A week early, and you want to get access to the Sanity Check and some of our other content, uh, please consider Patreon. It's only three bucks. You pay for us to grab a cup of coffee, which is fantastic. Uh, and you, like, you will get to enjoy the episodes a week early, like two new people, like Lynn and Jonathan, Yay. who are joining oh, us. Yay. Hey, Lynn and Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you very much. It really does help out. Like you, you don't even know. Um, yeah, like we're able to like like Jean can have a new mic now, an, an actual real you mic notice. with a mic stand. Doesn't he no sound? Longer... I can drink water now. He doesn't because ha he's because his water bottle is not his mic stand. Because <laughs> I got a mic. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. I um, got a mic. But yeah, thank you very much for your guys' support. Really appreciate it. And you guys, guys, thank you. Thank you for a, a good one. That got you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I will say, Dace, you had said that you have almost that you have stopped taking notes because of how confused you are, and I know you've been furiously taking notes this entire episode. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah. I started <laughs> taking notes again. I'm reinvigorated. Reinvigorated. Uh, but yeah, but guys, thank you very much. Uh for those uh listening and watching later, uh join us next time. For, uh, for as we continue to see what, how these, what these guys are going to do to get out of this house. For those of you uh, watching live, uh, stay tuned. We are going to be back. We're going to take a break. And besides that, as always, everyone, remember, please, please remember, stay safe and stay sane. Bye. Bye.